here is a question what is the technique if one has no uh, psychic abilities to contemplate body feelings mind mind objects externally that is uh, that uh, of others <coughs> Does one merely infer uh, based on one's uh, based on oneself when insight has matured somewhat? Uh, one does not have to wait until insight is matured to do this kind of compar uh, comparison. As one uh, practices, one will see how. Uh, rising and uh, falling of body takes place. As I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, when you breathe in, you feel the rising. When you breathe out, you feel the falling. That is w what can happen to any body when that person breathes in and breathes out. There is no difference. So I can infer uh, that uh, your bodies will rise when you breathe in and your bodies will fall when you breathe out. Same thing with feelings. I feel pleasant as you all already mentioned, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. Uh, feeling and uh, that feeling <coughs> if I really mindfully pay attention to the feeling disappears after a while. If it is unpleasant sometimes it may increase and it may reach a certain point and then it begins to disappear. Pleasant feeling the same thing arises it stays for a while and it disappears. And in between there is a feeling which I even don't notice very much. That is what we call in, in, indifferent or neutral feeling, neither pleasant nor unpleasant feeling. That is where I feel a sort of a grey area. But it immediately becomes something pleasant or unpleasant. Therefore I know that there is a feeling between pleasant and unpleasant. That is what we call neither pleasant nor unpleasant. That also changes. It doesn't stay. So when I understand this, I understand that is how other people also feel. That is what happens to other people's feelings. There's no difference. So is mind, mind and mind objects. This mind, uh, when uh, here, we cannot see the mind, uh, we cannot understand the mind or feel the mind alone without mental contents. Mind here means consciousness. Consciousness, we can never become aware of consciousness because as uh, today we discussed, consciousness arises dependent upon four other aggregates. Okay. You agree, what is the rising breath? Yeah. Uh, yes, knowing is conscious, becoming. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> hmm? <coughs> yes, you know, if I were to go into that details, it's a very beautiful, very interesting detail. As as he mentioned, all the five aggregates you can rise, you can see rising and falling in one breathing. That means when you breathe in, you feel the breath. That is your form. Breath is physical. And you feel the breath. That is your feeling. Feeling aggregate. Then you mentally perceive the breath. That is perception aggregate. Then you know that this is a breath. That is your thought. The very thought that, uh, that this is a breath. This is inhaling. This is exhaling. That very thought is mental formation. 
that is a formation aggregate and you are conscious of it you are aware of it that is your consciousness aggregate so all the five aggregates arise all the five aggregates pass away while we are breathing in and out that happens to my breath as well as to other people's breath so you, you can see all the five aggregates form feeling perception thoughts and consciousness functioning every time we breathe in and breathe out and this does not change from person to person this is universal phenomenon so one time i become aware of these five aggregates rising and falling within myself then i realize i think in fact whenever the mind goes to some body somewhere that time i can immediately call on this uh, phenomenon occurrence of this phenomenon that is yes in that person that person also breathes and uh, along with the breathing that person that person's five aggregates are functioning the same way at, at, at the, as they were functioning in me so this is an inferential sometimes some people call it uh, inferential insight uh, not direct insight <coughs> this question very often people ask uh, how do we know other people's minds without having psychic powers because in, in the uh, mindfulness of consciousness uh, uh, section of the four foundations of mindfulness uh, it uh, says uh, uh, saragan chittan saragan chittan tipajana that means one becomes mindful of a greedy state of mind as greedy state of mind non greedy state of mind as non greedy state of mind hateful state of mind as hateful state of mind non hateful state of mind as non hateful and so forth uh, we know our own mental states the question is how do we know other people's mental state that they have they may not have the greedy state or non greedy state at the same time while i'm having it i don't have any direct knowledge of it but once i understood how it happens in within me when greed arises i know this is the greedy state of mind similarly when greed arises in the other person's mind he also knows that this is the greedy state of mind so i realized that this is the way other person also experiences greedy state of mind just like i experience greedy state of mind only in this way that we can know the mind of the others that means the universal nature of men of new nature nature of the way how consciousness operates the whole world is out there uh, you close your eyes sit in one place and then you meditate at that time although people are not around you you still can have this uh, uh, the awareness understanding insight into the universal nature of the way how mind operates uh this uh, kind of mindfulness is should should be understood as a in a looking at the large picture i mean in a macrocosmic way uh we begins with microcosmic way that means we begin with us then we realize that i am not alone the whole world all living beings are exactly going through the same thing just like i go through and that is why the, the practice of mindfulness eventually leads to compassion loving friendliness appreciate your joy and so forth we see the universality of our experiences 
you are not different from me. When uh, certain things happen, I react the, uh, certain, this five aggregates react the, reacts in a certain way and those five aggregates also react the same way that these five aggregates react. And therefore, Buddha said, Attanang upamang kattva nahanayana gathay. Making oneself an, an example, one should not hurt others. Because when I see my five aggregates, when something happened to these five aggregates, this mind operates in a certain way. And then I know if those things happen to other five aggregates, their minds also will operate the same way. For instance, when somebody hit me, my five aggregates operate in a certain way. I feel the hit, that the contact, the feeling, perceptions, thought, pain arises in me. So, I try to prevent uh, being hit by anybody because I know the feeling. Similarly, I think I should not hit anybody because that person also feels exactly the same way as I do. So, this is a very wide, vast, involved kind of uh, uh, mindfulness uh, practice. So, whether people are present or not, when we develop this kind of mindfulness, uh, we are with everybody in the world. You know, it is purely because of not seeing the truth, not developing insight, not understanding, uh, somebody can say that. Yes, so we have to constantly keep reminding them, but often there's a feeling that they're not really convinced. Yeah. You know, that is uh, why my suffering is your suffering. Your suffering is my suffering. I am not different from your suffering. When you suffer, I suffer. When one person suffers in the world, I, I am part of it. So, I try to get rid of my suffering for the sake of myself and for the sake of others. So when I reduce my suffering, I can help others to reduce their suffering to that extent. That is why Atta, Buddha said, Attana Rakato Parang Rakati. Parang Rakato Attana Rakati. When you protect yourself, you protect others. When you protect others, you protect yourself. It goes along with everything, suffering, joy, pleasure, friendliness, happiness, success, uh, peace, and so forth. So I think uh, this inferential uh, insight is very interesting thing. and. Uh, uh, we have to uh, very mindfully uh, uh, cultivate this inferential insight. Uh, so that uh, uh, we can be more soft, more gentle, uh, more kind, uh, you know, more uh, relaxed, friendly with uh, others because we share their suffering in our understanding.
common pool of suffering. <coughs> How is that, and in order to overcome our own suffering, everyone has to overcome suffering since we have a common pool of suffering. How is that different from the Bodhisattva's pledge? Bodhisattva's pledge is that they openly uh, declare it. Uh, in Theravada tradition, they, we don't openly make a special vow, openly don't uh, declare. But if you remember the life story of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva, when he uh, was almost <coughs> on the verge of attaining Arantud, he met Deepankar Buddha according to Buddhist legend. He was almost ready to attain Arantud when he met Deepankar Buddha. Then he thought, no, this is very easy now. I can attain Arantud any time. But what about these people, countless people in the world? I must wait. I must reach full perfections, practice all the perfections, and attain enlightenment, so my service will be very, very large. It can reach many millions and millions of people. If I attain enlightenment now, it is limited to my own attainment. So, the idea is there, the Bodhisattva idea is there in Theravada uh, tradition. But the difference is that Theravada Buddhists don't talk very much about it and don't make a special vow uh, to save others. But the, but the danger is that most people <coughs> emphasize on saving the world. They don't try to save themselves. Doesn't matter, they, 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 some people think that it doesn't matter to me. So long as I save the world, I'm okay. Yeah, well. Yes, our intention is very much like both of the intention. Only thing is we don't uh, emphasize that aspect. We want to um, learn, we want to purify our mind. With that state we help others. So, uh, our, we don't abandon the idea of helping others. Uh, but we can help them better if we help ourselves well. <clears throat> I think we close here and uh, get